couple of weeks ago, I presented to you the activity of spooning from Practical Life. And since then, I received so many requests for me to show you some more Practical Life activities. People find this easy to put together at home. They don't really have to make a big purchase to get started with Montessori. And I agree, Practical Life is really one of the best places to start uh, for a newcomer to Montessori. So today, what I'd like to show you is a dry pouring activity. My name is Jenny Amar. I'm the master trainer at Sunshine Teachers Training, and we are here to empower parents and to empower educators into being able to give their children the very best that they can. So as you know, practical life activities are the simple activities that we do around the home and the children are attracted to it because they see us doing it and when they get a chance to do it, it makes them feel more important, it makes them feel grown, grown up, it lifts up their self-esteem. In fact, we have quite a few videos talking about the benefits and um, you know how practical life activities are enjoyable for children. I'm going to link those videos above and I will also link them in the description box below so you can learn more about how wonderful these activities are. Today's activity is a simple dry pouring activity. It's not going to be difficult for you to set up at all. All you need is a small jug, another empty container, a tray and of course your mat. Okay, and when we're done, we're going to talk about ways in which you can vary this up, change it up to, uh, you know, make it more exciting and more challenging for your child. Today, I'd like to teach you how to do dry pouring. Watch me first, then I'll give you a turn to try. This is the mat. This is the tray. This is the jug with the colorful rice. This is the empty container. And this is the indicator line. Watch me first, and then you can try. to try so at this point I would offer the activity to the child to try out for themselves and once they have successfully completed the activity then I would tell them today we've learned how to do dry pouring whenever you want to take this again you know where it's kept on the shelf you can take it and use it and that completes a simple dry pouring presentation easy right we're going to talk a little bit about the benefits of this activity on the surface to anybody just looking from the outside it seems like it was just a pouring activity it took all of 30 seconds to a minute to complete so what did my child really learn from this first things first look at the fingers that the child has to use to pick it up they are using the same fingers that they would use to hold a pencil now children struggle a lot with writing they reject it a lot it's one of the things that i see in schools you know teachers are having to force children to do or bribe children to do or punish them when they don't do and the reason why children struggle is because their fingers are not ready and we put that pencil into their hands and we force them to write but if their fingers are strong enough built up through practical life activities through sensorial activities they're not going to hate it that much so in a very unconscious way, in a fun way, doing something they enjoy, their fingers, what we call the pincer grip, is getting stronger. At the same time, their eyes and their hands have to work together. We call this eye-hand coordination. That is also very important as a part of writing because when I write, my eyes and my hands have to coordinate. I cannot write looking all over, isn't it? When children come to us uh, at the age of two in preschool, their eyes and their hands aren't very well coordinated yet. You'll see when they talk to somebody, they look here or they'll be doing an activity and their eyes are wandering because they have not developed eye-hand coordination. So this activity is one of those that will help them build eye-hand coordination. They're also learning about volume and mathematics skills because they learn that they have to stop where the indicator line is. Do you notice that in practical life activities, we name all the material. 
Our presentations are generally done in silence, so we name all this new material for the children, so they're learning so much new vocabulary. Can you see the benefits of this one-minute activity for your child? And don't forget, their concentration is developing. Eventually, they're going to have to sit down and concentrate on reading a book or writing down words or building words or, you know, doing mathematics where they need 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of concentration. We need to build it up from the beginning, minute by minute, second by second. We have to help them to gradually get there. It doesn't happen overnight, right? So these short activities that they will repeat over and over again help them to build their, that level of concentration to what they need when they get to the ages of four, five, and six. Now, one of the beautiful things about Montessori materials is that children love to repeat it. They want to do it over and over again. In fact, I get parents sometimes who ask me, Jenny, my child is sitting and they are transferring water with a sponge over and over. How do I make her stop? But we don't want them to stop. If they are enjoying it and they're repeating it over and over again, then that should teach us that our child is getting some satisfaction from this. And we don't need to stop them. What we do, what we need to do is to add a challenge to make it maybe a little bit more difficult or a little bit more different and exciting. So here are some ideas to make your, to vary what we call varying up the activity, adding a variation, uh, thereby making it different and more challenging. One of the things we can do is we can actually, before we do, this is more advanced with the indicator line, we can just have dry pouring from one jug to another jug, okay? Simple and easy to start with. From there, we could have two equal containers, all right? So the child, you put an uh, equal amount of rice here that's going to divide between these two containers and the child pours here. Once the child has worked with that and they're comfortable with that, then we can take it up a notch and we put two unequal containers, okay? Now remember one thing, whenever you have an activity that has unequal containers or an indicator line, there should always be enough rice that the child will have a remainder in the jug. He will not be able to pour it here or, you know, there will always be some leftover to show the child that there must be a remainder when it's unequal. This is indirect preparation towards mathematics, okay? Once we've done these, that's when we could do the activity with the indicator line and the child has to stop pouring where the line is. And then, to make it even more challenging, you could get a container with more of a narrow mouth, something like a bottle, and then the child can use a funnel to pour into the container to teach them how to, you know, manage the, the uh, contents of the jug and pour it so that it doesn't spill, all right? So that's a lot of ideas for you. Other things you could do is changing your jugs, you know, according to the seasons, according to, um, you know, holidays and celebrations. We could change the contents. I have colored rice here. You could use pasta, you could use corn, uh, whatever it is, you know, that you feel might be interesting. Now remember, if your child is below four, you do not want to use rice, okay? You definitely do not want to use rice. You want to use something like uh, larger like corn, dried corn, uh, red kidney beans. The reason for this being is that children, you know, when they spill, and they will spill, sometimes on purpose, sometimes on mistake, it's uh, by mistake, it's part of their learning process. When they spill rice, it's a challenge for them to tidy up, to pick up those tiny grains, they get frustrated. So definitely do not start with rice. I've seen a lot of new mums. The first thing they do, they will do spooning with rice. They will do dry pouring with rice. And then it turns into this whole big mess and everybody's frustrated. So avoid that. Make it easy on yourself and start with something that's easy to tidy. Whether they want to sweep it or whether they want to pick it, it's going to be something that's not, you know, too difficult for them. So here's a question I get asked a lot when I'm teaching this material in class. My students want to know, what do I do if my child keeps pouring and overshoots the indicator line? They don't stop at the indicator line. Well, one thing you can do is ask the child to repeat it. We never interrupt children when they are doing an activity. Even if they are making a mistake, 
We do not break into their process of working and say, hey, stop, this is not how to do it. We let them complete the activity. And then what I would do is I would say, would you like to try again? But this time, try and see if you can stop at the indicator line. Now, maybe they just got so involved in the activity, so they didn't, you know, take note of the indicator line. Maybe they were just not focused. I don't know what the reason was. It doesn't really matter. All right. So just encourage them. And if they, you know, they want to, they will. Otherwise, another time, then you will ask them, hey, could you try this again? I want to see if you can pour it up to the indicator line. Let's see if you can notice and stop in time. We want to do it in a nurturing way, in an encouraging way. We don't want to rob them of the joy of the activity. That's the most important thing. Okay. Another thing that tends to happen when children are doing any of the practical life activities, be it spooning, be it dry pouring, be it even with the water activities, they start doing things like, you know, they will pick up the rice and they may sprinkle it like this or they pour the rice into the tray, or they've got their fingers in the rice. I don't know, I've seen all kinds of things. I'm sure you have things that you've seen your children do. And this drives teachers and mothers alike quite crazy because they feel like, why is my child doing this? This is not how I show them. This is wrong. This is the incorrect way to do it. Keep two things in mind, okay? As long as the child is being respectful to the material, they are not damaging the material, nor are they disturbing or hurting their friends, it's fine. This is their process of exploration, of discovery, of thinking out of the box, of being stimulated by the sensory feel of the rice or whatever the contents are in their hands. Children are not designed to stick to rules, okay? And we don't want them to, right? We all want to raise innovative children who are able to think out of the box. They're not doing this because they're trying to be naughty and defy the rules or upset you. This is just them being curious, being excited to know, testing the limits. What will happen if I pour the rice in a tray? How does it feel when I run my fingers through it? It's just them listening to what's coming from inside, from that inner teacher who's curious and interested to know what can I do with this material? So. Remember, you remind them, if you see the child taking the rice and throwing it at their friends or stepping on the rice, then we step in and we say, you know, this isn't the way we use the material. Do you remember how to use it? And I'd like you to use it the proper way. Otherwise, we'll have to put it away. Gentle, but firm. Okay. But uh, if you see the child, you know, makes whatever kind of a so-called mess with the material, we have to encourage them and be firm about them tidying it up okay they're most welcome to explore but it's got to go back to the shelf the same way they found it okay it can be a bit challenging but once you keep sticking to those rules bit by bit you'll see they will get there parents and teachers don't forget that practical life does not end at the shelves this is not where it stops we've got to extend this into our day-to-day -day lives have them pour dry ingredients when you are doing a cooking activity. Maybe they have soil and they can pour it into the pot for you. We've got to show them and give them opportunities to practice these skills in real life. What I've seen is that, you know, teachers and parents get stuck and think this is, you know, all I'm going to do with them. And they don't let the children live these activities in their day to day lives. That's what they want to do. So don't make that mistake. Be sure to let them practice the practical life skills into everyday life as well, okay? So now you've learned how to do dry pouring and present it the Montessori way. Uh, put your own twist on it. Be creative with your material. Share pictures with me in the comments below. I'd love to see how you are incorporating dry pouring in your home. And if there are materials or activities that you'd like to learn more about, that's what the comments box is for. Let me know and I'll be back to teach you about what you want to learn. Until we meet again, I wish you all a beautiful day.